and joined by Caroline Wales. And uh, Caroline, uh, thanks so much uh, for joining us here, and uh, uh, congratulations on a tremendous tournament uh, and uh, uh, the individual champion on the women's side, and uh, that's got to be a great feeling. Thank you. Yes, it is. It's my first college tournament that I've actually won um, because I tied for first in a playoff in the in the um, fall, and then I lost the playoff. So it felt really good to finally get a win and. Um, the course is in such great shape, so I'm really appreciative for Victoria Club for hosting and for all the staff. And um, It was a really great fight down in the end um, of the round. The girls I was playing with really played well, so that was really fun, and it made it a great challenge. And so <laughs> winning feels that much sweeter um, because of my determination, <laughs> despite some really bad holes. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Personally, I think if you get into a playoff, that counts as a win, but sure, okay. Uh, so talk a little bit about that because you mentioned that this was your first win. So uh, what was that like? What was that mindset? Like were you thinking about that in the final several holes of, hey, I can win this thing, or is that something that you're just trying to keep out of your head as much as possible? So I I knew. I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, like about the the how much lead I had on um, the girl I was playing with. And so – I, she started hitting some really great shots, and I was just trying to scramble and, like, make pars. So that got pretty nerve-wracking, but I, like, looked back um, going into the last hole, and I was like, I felt this pressure before in the playoff because it was a six-hole playoff, I think, and we were both playing out of our minds in the playoff, and so I was like, I know I can do this. And so um, just trying to – my heart rate was at, like – I looked at my watch, like 111, I was just standing still. So I really had to focus on my breathing and just praying and, and just trying to calm myself and be, so I can execute the shots I was trying to do. Now, how important is Are you really thinking about even slowing down a little bit more as you prepare for your shot and going through your routine? Um, yeah, I have definitely had to lean on my, like, mental game um, for sure and breathing and... Um, just various things but that was what got me through today was definitely like leaning on my breathing and um the different strategies I've really worked hard on because mental game has always been a struggle of mine so um I know like I wouldn't have been able to come through with a win like I tended to fall apart like in the last tournaments and it just like my dad always says, you're building your mental muscles. So I've worked it really hard, and it's been really painful sometimes. But finally, I was able to really just focus in, and I was determined to do it. Um, so yeah. Helpful to have the coach out there, uh, you know, in your group to have somebody there, or are they kind of keeping distance from you and letting um, you kind of stay focused in your own in your own head as you're playing? What's that relationship down the stretch? So I. When I'm out there, I, do, I don't have my coach with me at all. Um, I've just I played competitive golf for a long time, and I never had a coach. And so I just had to figure that out on my own since I was, like, 11, 12. And so um, I've just kind of kept it like that in college. And, um, yeah, just kind of, like, really lean on myself and just praying. And mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's kind of what I've done. So we'll talk a little bit about how you got started in, in the game. Where did, uh, how did you start playing and who, who first got you kind of going with, uh, with the game of golf? So my mom's uh, dad, my grandpa, he was a golfer and he was actually able to come out and watch, which was really sweet because he hasn't been able to see me play in a tournament for a long time. Um, so that was amazing, but yeah, he got me started, but I wasn't really into it because I was a competitive gymnast for 10 years, and so that was really what I wanted to do, um, was gymnastics when I was, that was about when I was like six when he first gave me a club in my hand, but my sister was doing a summer camp at First Tee, and, um, I was like, I want to do that too, so when I was about eight, I did a First Tee summer camp, and then I was in the program all the way until I graduated high school, so First Tee's really where I got started. I can't pretend to be an expert, but I'm pretty sure you can play golf for a lot longer than you can do gymnastics. So I think yes. uh, you probably made the right choice in the long haul. Uh, we're going to watch a little bit of the action on 18. Can you stay with us and maybe talk a little bit about it? You saw 18 a little bit earlier today and uh, maybe talk about how some of the guys are doing down the stretch here? Yeah. Um... Okay, because they're right out here. So uh, just talk a little bit about uh, as we're getting ready uh, for a shot. Uh, from the back of the green and uh, 18th green, uh, you know, pretty flat. But these greens, as we were watching today, uh, very tough, very subtle. A lot of subtle break, 
uh, in these greens and uh, proving to be a challenge, I think, to read. Yeah, this this whole gave me some trouble. I had a double on this hole today. Um, well, sorry to make you revisit that, but okay. hey, you made it through. It's okay. It kind of lit a fire in me. Um, <laughs> I think the important part on this hole is to hit two good shots in the fairway to set yourself up um, for a good approach shot. Right, we'll watch. Uh, ready to play. It's Z Xavier Carreno uh, from just on the left side of the green. And... Uh, uh, do you remember on this whole location as these players get ready to putt here, um, some movement on the putts on you? Know, this hole looked like a fairly flat spot, but a little subtle break, perhaps? Yeah, it's pretty flat when you're putting from below the hole. Um, that's where I was today. Yeah, Dakota Ochoa, who is uh, currently leading on the men's side, was talking to us a little bit about it and saying that overall on this course, uh, very important hole after hole to keep the ball uh, below the hole. Was that uh, in keeping with your approach? Or was uh, was that a big part of being successful on this course? Yes. Um, I did get myself above the hole on the eighth hole, which is really slopey. And if you know that's going to be really fast, then you have to trust yourself to just baby it. And Greg Mauser coming out of the that trap. That was a great shot. And how did you find it? Did you spend much time at the, in the traps. I can't imagine there was too much time in there, but uh, uh, was that a challenge on this course? In fact, as we asked before, what do you think in looking back was uh, the challenge of this course uh, that this course presents specifically and, and how were you able to overcome that? Um, I would, I'd say like when you miss the greens, you can leave yourself in some really tough spots just because of how slopey the greens are. Um, so I really had to rely on my short game, which is definitely a strength of mine. Um, and it, it was really good this week, so that definitely helped because I left myself in some crazy um, spots for up and downs. But, yeah, that's kind of the key is just hitting hitting the creeps, honestly, or just having a good short game. And as a player, when you're out there and you're in a, and you're in a tight match, uh, uh, which one keys you up more when you can hit a great shot and stick one or when you can maybe come up with a circus up and down when you think and maybe you think your opponents have you in some trouble and you get out of it? Um, I imagine they're both pretty good, but... Yeah, I would say, like, today I think I had more six-footers that I had to make for par than, like, most rounds ever, and I made every single one of them, but I can tell you what, it was so stressful, <laughs> but when you ha make them over and over again, the confidence in, in grinding versus, um, you know, when you're having a bunch of birdie putts... Um, you get a little bit more confident, I guess, when you're making all those putts. Sure, it helps to see him go in. <laughs> and is it now, is it um, any kind of a surprise for you? Is putting usually kind of where your game's at, and that's the uh, that's uh, where you're strongest? Um, I would say when my head is in the right spot, yes. Putting um, is a strength of mine, just being confident in it. Liam Alder coming back up the that's slope. That's a great putt. And dead center for Alder as Carreno will putt next. Any difference in how you approach the four of the last five holes or par fives uh, on this course? Now that's the front nine for you today, but that's unusual uh, to see such a collection of par fives. And th how did that impact how you were, were you playing this course? Were you trying to be patient and wait for that? Were those holes that you felt like you could attack a little bit more? Um. Yeah, I just focused on trying to give myself a, a good wedge shot in. Um, and so I was able to birdie two of those par fives. Um, and then I had, unfortunately, a double today. But I know, like, my wedge game's strong, so it was really nice to have a lot of those par fives. And it's so important to play to a number. Did you have kind of a specific number that you were trying to play to and get yourself a... Um, to a specific spot that you felt really comfortable at a certain distance? Some of them. They were, I, I don't hit the ball terribly far, so I kind of just hit my three wood, and I knew if it was between, you know, if it was less than 100 yards, or I, I was going to be good, but <laughs> I know with those longer hitters, they definitely have to pick a number. John Kim working on a solid back nine, and in from about five feet. And one more putt, and as we let this uh, second-to-last group play out, and, uh, well, you're champion here in the 3C2A uh, Women's Golf Championship, and uh, anybody you want to 
say hi to or give a shout out to, uh, you know, on a big day for you? Uh, shout out to both my parents for coming to watch. Always so supportive, and my grandparents. And just everyone is always supporting me. I really appreciate it. Well, Caroline, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it, and congratulations again on a great tournament. Thank you.